Hey there, we're uh, getting ready to go fishing. So we're getting ready to go fishing now that it's warming up real good. We'd like to do a lot of saltwater fishing. So we're uh, getting the truck loaded up here. And I'm fixing to be changing my hats from uh, the one you see me wearing all the time. Be wearing my fishing hat here soon. Keep all this, some of the sun off of me. But uh, we're loading up the truck. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you a video here, which is not really a video, but um, more it's gonna be more pictures, really, from last year where we did a lot of fishing before we started making YouTube videos. So there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of pictures here of fish that we caught. Some pictures of us, pictures of the fish. We caught a lot of fish last summer, and we were going over to the the west side of Florida. Um, a lot of it was over towards Clearwater, over around that area, and then we also went over to the east side of Florida, um, <coughs> over close to Sebastian, over close around that way, and caught a lot of fish over there too. So we were kind of like one weekend go to one side of the state and then the other weekend go to the other side, switching off from west and east. But um, we're getting the truck loaded up here, so you can see some of the holes and stuff we got here. <coughs> and I'm going to, uh, I'll also show you some of the the poles and some of the way I rig them up, stuff like that too. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit this. You can keep it going. You got it? Turn it on? No, I'm gonna edit. Oh. You got it? It's still going? Okay. That's my signal, I do that. So I know that my part's coming up where I can edit. And here's my, um, that's just my signal to me when I'm doing my videos. Especially if I'm making like several different videos. So there's another one. I got um like a little hand signal to me. I do a little thumbs up when I start the video, so I, it's just a hand hand signal to me. I thought it'd be pretty cool to leave it in here. So I just do that for myself when I'm editing. So I don't usually I usually edit that out. It looks pretty cool, just leave it in the video, at least on this one. Okay, here's um, some pictures from the west side of Florida, the west coast of Florida. Because we're about, we're just about in the middle of Florida, so we got about an hour and a half drive to the east side of Florida, and then about an hour and a half drive to the west side of Florida. So here's some pictures from the west coast side of Florida, over around Clearwater, that area. Here real quick, I want to um, explain to you these measuring, these measuring sticks here that you're seeing, these tape measures. These are from the uh, Florida, these are from the Florida CCA Star tournaments. We've been doing them um, every summer for the last couple of years, uh, last the last, the last three years. Um, <clears throat> the first one we did was uh, in um, 2017 and then we did 2018. These are on for like two to three months in the summer and then uh, last year was 2019 and uh, when you enter these you can fish. They have a lot of different um, a lot of different categories and um, they have a lot of different species of fish you can fish for. Like it shows them on the on the measuring tape, and it shows the uh, the minimum lengths for the fish. And what they do is they go by the minimum lengths that you can keep the fish. And then at that minimum length is um, 
to enter the fish into that, that category. So like if you catch a red fish, if you catch a red fish that, that does not have a tag in it, as long as it's the minimum length, then you can enter it into the non-tagged redfish division. If it catches, if you catch a redfish and it has a, a tag in it, then you automatically win a, a, a boat or a truck. They have um, like one truck and, and like four different boats. I think it's usually four boats. So you get to choose. So whoever catches a tagged redfish first and they're, they're entered, they're registered um, in the tournament. Um, they get their first choice of the boat. And then uh, it keeps going like that until the last boat that's left. And then uh, whoever catches the, then the next one, the next redfish with the tag. Then they get the boat until the boats are all gone. And then they give, give away a lot of other prizes too. Um, they have a whole lot of prizes in a lot of different divisions. Like if you catch the, um, if the fish is under the length, then you can enter it into the, the conservation division. And any other, any fish you catch, you can enter it in the conservation division. If it's not one of these, um, spe main species for the tournament. This is my wall here for the, uh, our fishing wall. I got a bunch of pictures up here. I put our our measuring devices up here that we hadn't used for the tournament, and I'll show you this real quick too. Let me adjust this down. You can get two of these uh, measuring devices per per, or we get two because me and one that both enter in it. And uh, last year I was using this one. Look at the difference in that. And these are the main fish to catch for the, the tournament. But you can catch any fish. Any fish you catch, you can enter it into the conservation division. In the conservation division, they have several prizes there too on that division. All the, all the divisions, they, they pretty much have at least four prizes. So if, if you don't win the main prize, you still have other prizes you can win. So they're, they're, they're having you know, tons of prizes are given away on these every year. Plus they give away a bunch of coolers too on the weeks, um, like every Friday coming up before the, before the contest. I was mainly using this one last year. I figured I'd use it first and then if it got destroyed or tore up, and then we'd switch and use the, the newer one. So we use this a lot. So you'll see this in these pictures that are coming up here. Because all the fish, when you catch the fish, you um, hold it up to this measuring tape, take the picture of it, and then enter it through the phone app into the tournament. It's pretty cool. Here's something else that's pretty cool too. You can take a um, five gallon bucket while you're out there fishing, fill up a five gallon bucket of trash, and then just set it um, beside this tape measure and take a picture of it with this tape measure. And you can enter that into the um, conservation division also. So that's pretty cool. And I've actually been uh, picking up a lot more trash and stuff too now since I've been doing this. So I've been picking up a lot more trash and all too since I've been doing this too because of that. So that's pretty cool because you can win prizes just by picking up trash, collecting a five gallon bucket of trash.
Also these bottle caps here, I made these fishing lures. These bottle cap fishing lures. Out of um, all different types of uh, bottle caps. <clears throat> so like these here, I'll put the single hook on it. And here's some more. These I put treble hooks on these. And I made this here too. When that took that picture of me catching this snook. So I made that myself. And then some more of my the bottle caps. Fishing lures, and I got the treble hooks on these. And this is the one I made for Robin. Got the uh, the bottle caps too. I made and put them on this one as well for the uh, and these I got the treble hooks on them. I used all kinds of bottle caps. Huh? You can make them with soda. So the bottle caps too, but I made that. Also, I want to show you this um, bookends that I made for my G.I. Joe collection. Okay, here we go. Okay, now here's some pictures from the east coast of Florida. Over on, around Sebastian and a little bit south of Sebastian, Sebastian Inlet. Over around that area. We found a pretty good spot over there that we did a lot of fishing. And uh, here's some photos of, from there. So at one one spot here last year, um, we sat there, we stood there and uh, side by side and caught 73 fish. And I was able to measure that, or I was able to count that because of taking the pictures with the 
with the, the measurement stick here to enter, enter them into the app. So um, we stood there about four hours side by side as fast as we could reel them in, put them up here and take a picture against the tape and then throw them back. Or a, a few of them that we kept that was legal, legal size to keep. But on four hours, just constantly pulling them in, measuring them, pulling them in, measuring them, pulling them in, measuring them. We caught 73 fish. But I wanted to show you the, um, explain to you the tape measure here, what you're seeing in the pictures of all of our fish up against the tape measure. And then uh, here's our, um, we did the, the shore base shark fishing course online last year too and got these. So if we catch a, a shark that's um, legal size to keep, we can keep it since we have the, the permits, the certificates. So that, that's a pretty easy course to do. and then I'm going to do another Here's um, some photos of some mangrove snappers we've been catching. That's one of my favorite fish to catch, and we caught a lot of them. And there's a lot of different, uh, like a variety in colors. And some of them look really cool to me. They have a, like a blue stripe running in them. So I want to show you a bunch of these different colors of mangrove snappers. Some of them are really cool looking. And like I said, there was a, a wide variety of colors. And we caught them all right there in one spot. I'm getting all these photos here put on here. We caught so many mangrove snappers, so I'm not putting them all on here. So I'm just kind of showing you real quick here. So we caught so many of them, I'm not putting them all on there. Because in the one, the one spot, the one day we caught in four hours, we caught 73 fish within four hours standing there side by side just as fast as we could pull them in and take our picture and throw them back and a few days before that we stood there for two hours and uh, as fast as we could pull them in called them um, in two hours caught 35 fish with, with the two of us so that's um I'm not going to show them all on here just uh, doing my editing all right, let me have it now. All right. 
Okay, um, while I'm loading up the truck too, I was just going to show this here real quick. Our fishing cart that we got last year. And I actually added this piece onto it right here with some more rod and reel holders. But this fishing cart worked out really good for us last year. I've been working on our fishing cart a little bit here. So I still got to go and clean up a couple rusty bolts there. And I'm going to cut me a board and thin board put in the bottom. It makes it a little better for putting some of our stuff in there. The nets and the, and the little cool, the cooler bags that I use and stuff. I replaced some of the, the rusted bolts and nuts with some stainless steel put stainless steel nuts and bolts back in it and I had repaint re um, actually replaced the these boards here that I had added to it and painted them I had actually some couple plywood pieces on there that that got old in the weather not they weren't really made for the weather these are actually um they look like wood but they're they're a man-made material for out, made for outside. So these won't rot or nothing. Plus I painted them to match the cart. Got that fixed up and back in. Sprayed the um, heads of the screws up in there too. I'm getting our cart fixed up a little bit and ready. And this thing's been pretty handy. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the stuff we use here. All the fish we caught in these videos here that I'm showing you today, this video and these pictures, we're all caught on these. We have um, one that's rod and reel. The um, Shakespeare and this with an ugly stick. And we use these a lot. So we use these popping corks a lot here. They're weighted on one end so they sink down. And you want to put about a two, we use about a two foot liter, fluorocarbon liter. And I usually use around 20, either 20 pound or 30 pound fluorocarbon liter on it here. And what it does is it pops up and down. When you throw it out there, let it set a minute, pop it a couple of times, and it makes a clacking sound, and it attracts the fish. It's like a, it makes it sound like a, a shrimp or something is popping at a fish, trying to get away from it, and it attracts the fish to it. Other fish wanting to come eat. So every every couple of minutes, you pop that a little bit, a couple of times, two or two or three times. And a lot of times we're using live shrimp with that. And uh, Wynette also likes to use these fish bites. Those, those have been working pretty good too. I'll show you them in just a minute. Um, but we use that setup, the popping cork. And normally use a, um, uh, these are a, a one-aught, these are a one-aught hook here. They're really strong and they work really good. So all the, all the fish you see on there we've caught with either a one odd or a 2 odd hook. I use both one odd and 2 odd. And I have these pin, the pin Fierce 2. I have two of them that I use. And I've got one set up with the weight and the hook. And you'll see on, on that just a lot of, I fish the bottom with these. And um catching a lot of the mangrove snapper and flounder the mutton snapper stuff like that with that and these have been really good rods the pin fierce 2 the rod and reel combo so these have worked out really good for me and this is an 8 foot rod I like the little bit longer rod for saltwater fishing so it'll really throw it out there further and 
and this one I have the pop and cork on it. And I still have my leader a little bit longer. I don't I don't normally put this long a leader on it. I usually want about a two foot leader. But I got this one a little bit long, so I can I can always um cut it a little bit and and, and change the line, change the hook a little bit there if I need to. Um, and then I have these also. These are the Blair Wiggins Inshore Speed Stick. His addictive fishing rod and reels. These are small and light. Made by Luz and Blair Wiggins. But these are small and light and uh, I got 10 pound braided line on these. And these really um, will throw it out there too. And again, here's the um, setup with the the weight and the hook. And I believe that's the two watt. That's the two watt hook there. I got to pick up some more of them. I'm getting low on them, but that's the two watt hook. I really like the Eagle Claw, the laser sharp hooks. I use them a lot, and I use Mustad. These are a one knot. And these are my favorite here, the owner, why not? And I use all circle hooks. I really love using a circle hook. Because that fish, the hook would go in it, he can swallow the bait hole. And when he turns to start swimming away, the hook would catch him in the side of the mouth just about every time. And uh, they work really good. But I, I really love these, especially the, the owner, the owner hooks too. They're really strong. All these fish that you see we're catching, we're catching on these. Even these big redfish we're catching on these hooks. Most most of the time I'm using the one on. Sometimes the two on. And we're catching all these fish on those. And then the, the sinkers. I'm, I'm mostly using this size. Half ounce. So that's, that's what I'm mostly using. I have a couple different sizes though, depending on the current. Sometimes the current you need a little bit more. And um, you always want to carry carry your fish ID with you because there's so many f fish out there that you can catch a, bit, a pretty big variety of fish. That's what we do. The way we fish with these just these couple of rigs here that um, we have a really big variety of fish that we can catch as you'll see in these videos. Set this down there. Pretty nice fish on these two. And I've caught some too, but she really likes them. So the electric chicken is the color that I that we started with. The electric chicken and that this she caught a nice redfish on that. So the fish bites. Um, the electric chicken is the one she caught a, a nice big redfish on. But she's, um, she's caught several redfish on these, mangrove snappers, all kinds of stuff. Um, sheep's head, um, sea trout, she's caught all kinds of stuff like that. We, she's been using the pink a lot. Pink works really good. So we got several of these. The last time we went to a bait shop in Tampa, we picked up like three bags of them. So we make sure we had enough. Because not all the bait shops are carrying them. So th these work really good. Just an artificial bait. It's, it's, um, stays on the hook pretty good. So most all these fish we're catching with either these or, or live shrimp or frozen shrimp. And all we 
always use a good pair of scissors and my pliers. And then these are the bobbin popping corks. There's a couple other different kinds too. We've used a couple different kinds. DOA makes a really good one too. I've used some of theirs. I always use a pair of um, fingernail cutters, toenail cutters for cutting the fluorocarbon. But for cutting the um, the braid, you pretty much need either need a pair of scissors or a, or a good sharp knife like I carry. So that's pretty much the setup we use, at least in these videos here. When I do other videos too, where we're catching other species of fish, I'll show you what we're using there. But we're, we're pretty much mostly using these these three rod and reels here. And uh, usually one or two of these too. Because these, these work really good. And actually, um, we've had two fish break the line. We've had them break the uh, the line up here, up here somewhere around up in here, either to this or to the. I use the FG knot. I use the FG knot on the my braid to my fluorocarbon leader. But we've um, there's a lot of good knots you can use. I usually use a, the multi knot tying my lines. I try to use a multi knot tying tie my lines. And the uh, the improved clinch knot, it works pretty good too. There's several good videos on YouTube where you can find the uh, the knots and how to tie them. Um, Saltwater Experience and Salt Strong, Roland Martin, Real Reports, and Catfish and Carp. They all will, they all do a good. They all do a really good um, videos on knot tying. And the uh, the FG knot that I use tying my braid to my monofilament line right there, I really like it. It's really good and strong, and it'll go through the eyes of the rod and reels in and out with no problem. And actually, Salt Strong does a really good video on how to tie that knot, the FG knot. But um, back to this, um, what I was starting to say with these. Um, we've had two of these break off with the redfish on it and he'll he'll stay in the shallow water and you can see every once in a while the bobber here will come up and I was able to take the speed stick here and I changed and put a I put one of these on. tangled up now but I'd put one of these on and cast it out there so that it would just come up underneath the um and, and catch the line here it would catch my fluorocarbon leader and then I could reel that um, redfish back in and I was doing that with these with the um the 10 pound braided line and the uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader on them. And I, I, I did that twice and pulled the redfish in. So that was pretty nice, pretty cool. It was pretty cool stories doing that. But we did that this last summer, a couple of these redfish that I'm showing you on this video. So that's some of our gear and stuff we use that we used on the, this time in this video. The backpack here, I use that for my tackle box. I keep my tackle box in there and a little bit of tackle and stuff. And um, our fish um, holder here from Rapala. Also, I like to use um, a pair of gloves. These are fishing gloves. So when I'm out there in the sun, they're really light. They dry pretty quick when they get wet. Those are just pretty cheap. I got on online on Amazon. And this is my face shield that I'm wearing in the video here. By AFCO. 
and I like this because it has it has breathable holes so you can make, so you can breathe through it. So my glasses aren't fogging up. And this one was for the uh, the CCA. But this is by Aftco. And like I said, I got it because it has the uh, the breathable holes. So I don't I don't wear it a whole lot, but I I do like to wear it out there in the in the hot of the sun during the summertime. Here's our two thermos bags that I use. These are by Ozark Trail. And these are only like five or six bucks at Walmart. These were really good. They don't leak. I use them, I got two of them so I can, I'll use the green one, we'll put a little bit of ice in, ice in it. And um, I use the green one for fish. When we catch fish, I can throw the fish in there. That's why I got two different colors. And then uh, the red one here, I can throw ice in it and I can throw our drinks in there. Waters and stuff like that. These things work really good. Makes it really convenient too. It makes the, um, I'm not having to put a, a cooler in here to keep ice and stuff and try to have ice and drinks and fish and everything in one cooler. It makes it real convenient. And our chairs we got here. I actually picked these up for hunting. They fold up. And they got a strap on them. They got pockets on them. They zip up. So I usually at least, at least bring one of these out there with us when we're fishing. Because we don't, we don't sit down a lot, but because we're usually catching fish. But um, sometimes I'll bring one, sometimes two. And we can sit down a little bit if we need to. But these work out really good. They're small and light. And I actually had bought them for turkey hunting. We used them hunting a little bit. And then started using them fishing too. Here's a net that I like to use. We'll grab this at Walmart. We've used it a couple of years here. I saw I think we've been using it the yeah the last three years. And it um the handle goes in so it makes it easy to transport. And then we pull it back up and it'll it'll lock into place. The little pin will come up and lock it into place. So we just picked that up at Walmart. And then here's our bridge net. Ordered this on Amazon. Uh, about a year ago or so. Before last last summer. So this thing works pretty good. And a little tip, I put a put a pyramid weight on the very center and the bottom. So it'll pull it underwater when you drop it down. So when you drop the net down that'll pull it underwater and then you can pull the fish right into the net and then pull the net up once it's in the net. So that way it makes it a little, uh, little easier. And we've used this thing several times now. We've even helped um, helped other people bring their fish in since we had it. That's working pretty good for us. You can see in some of the pictures we're using it. As I show some more fishing videos from the other fish we've been catching, I'll, I'll show you what we used. <laughs> 